Hey everybody, welcome to Queer Girl Street Skates. I'm Rebel. Today we are going to have a really, really exciting episode. We are going to have a chat with a bunch of non-binary skaters. And so I have recruited a couple people to come and talk and they have expressed their desire to talk about their experience as being non-binary and being roller skaters. And so I'm going to pass it off to the incredible human that organized all of this. Anne, take it away. Uh, hello, thank you so much Rebel for giving us your platform this afternoon. I am so excited to talk with everybody and hear about your experiences and just have a little bit more community than I do in general. My name is Anne, I use the pronouns they, them, or zizier. I am a roller skater based in the Kansas City area, although I do a lot of border hopping between Missouri and Kansas. I'm a kids roller derby coach, uh, and I do a lot of park and street skating as well. I don't have a particular agenda for this meeting. I am just excited to talk with everybody else about what it's like to be a non-binary skater, whether that we are moving within the roller derby world, moving within park skating, street skating, whatever it is, because there's a lot of really great uh, work being done out there to talk about the racialized history of roller skating in the United States, but there's not necessarily the same type of conversation in happening uh, with a specific respect to gender, although I do hope that this conversation can be as intersectional as possible. Uh, I thought we could start out by all just sort of introducing ourselves a little bit, saying who we are, if you're comfortable sharing your pronouns or, and or where you skate, where you're from, although for safety, please don't feel like you have to, um, share all of that kind of stuff, where you skate, how you skate, what type of skating you do, how you came to skating, and then we can kick it off with a couple of different questions. Um, so Turquoise, would you mind going first? Yeah, hi. Uh, my real name is Kiana, but I like to be called Turquoise Dee. Uh, my, I identify by using they, them pronouns, and I skate. Uh, I kind of bounce back and forth between San Diego, Long Beach, and LA a lot. <laughs> hi, my name is Kelly Aaron. My pronouns are they, them, and I live in Los Angeles in Northeast LA, and I've been skating for 100 days when this video comes out, so I'm a baby skater. And my friend Wendy got me into skating, and I park skate around LA and a lot around Long Beach, and I really, really love it. Hi, I am Savvy. My pronouns are they, them. Uh, I skate around uh, Southern California for the most part. Hi, I'm Jaden. Uh, my pronouns are, they, are they, them. And I skate in Temecula right now. I started with Winetown Rollers for roller derby, and now I'm doing park and stuff. So I feel like the, the odd one out being from the Midwest, but got to represent the middle parts of the country. And it's excited to be with, exciting to be with a bunch of California skaters too. Um, so I guess before the first question, if we could all just talk a little bit maybe about how we came to skating and what we love about skating. Uh, does anybody want to go first? Yeah, so I guess I've been skating for like five years and how I came to it was I actually moved from Boise, Idaho back to California, um, my hometown. And I had just gotten out of like not a great relationship and I wasn't doing so hot. And I feel like a lot of people have watched the movie Whip It and I had always wanted to do roller derby. So I was like, yeah, let's, you know, shoot for my dreams, try to look like someone from Whip It. So I joined San Diego Roller Derby and that's where I learned to roller skate because um, they had like a roller skating program to get you into roller derby. So I started doing that and then about halfway through the year I saw that like park skating was a thing. I saw like CIB and um, who was it Moxie like the Moxie skate team video and those were the two that I had seen um, back then and it was really cool to see them um, because I had never seen anything like that as far as skate park skating with roller skates on so it's super cool and that's kind of where I started going to the parks and transferring from roller derby into the skate parks and first of all because it was free and also because I could do it on my own time <laughs> so that's where I've been for the last like five years and it's been amazing. So I came to roller derby through my best friend my best friend Spock Ness Monster who skates with me and then she and I both broke various body parts around the same time and after that I transitioned from being a roller derby player wannabe to being a, a non-skating official and official in trading but COVID sort of put that on the back burner. I also got my bonus kiddo, uh, my partner's 12-year-old uh, daughter, Rainbow Bite, 
into roller derby. She used to go to practice with me and I was like, I think you would like this. And then she got into it and has never not been lead jammer because she's amazing. Uh, so I coach the kids a lot as well. Um, but Ari also loves park skating and street skating. And I was like, okay, it's time to get over some of the fear following my ankle break. So I've been pushing myself to start doing uh, little bits and pieces of park skating, lots of street skating, especially since we don't have a lot of spaces to go skating anymore with roller derby not being able to happen. So I've been skating for about two years and it's been a lovely, amazing, wonderful ride the whole time. Um, I started maybe like two and a half to three years ago in roller derby. And I started also, I got out of a really, really bad relationship. I kind of just had not a lot going on to do. And I had a coworker that skated um, for Wine Town already. And she told me like, hey, I know you've never skated before ever, but I think you might really like this. <laughs> and I mean, she was right. I loved it. I loved the community and the people I met. And it was something for myself to do, like my own thing that nobody, like it didn't belong to anyone else. It just belonged to me, which was really nice because I kind of didn't have that at the time. Um, and then about a year ago, I think, I started doing parks and things like that. And then once COVID happened, I started doing parks a lot more. And I love that just as much. And I love the community just as much. So I think that's why I've stuck around and why I'll probably keep sticking around is because of the people. Um, so I started roller skating around winter of 2017, um, when my, one of my close friends who I went to high school with, Bella Maniachi, um, started roller skating and I was like, whoa, that's really cool. I don't know anybody who roller skates and like, you know, I used to go to the rink when I was little. So I went and got some, uh, roller skates and we started just skating together and learning and it was really neat because we didn't know anybody else who really roller skated and it was a really like great way to kind of spend time together without having to plan out a whole day of like things to do we could literally just grab our skates go to the beach and just spend hours skating and so yeah I just really loved it because I didn't know anybody else who skated so I didn't have anything to compare what I was doing to anything else but you know myself um and it helped me kind of uh feel more comfortable in my creativity and expressing myself as a whole, um, I found. So I just really love roller skating. It's something that stuck with me for years. Uh, don't plan on stopping. And I really love all the people and the friends that I've made. Yeah, I um, grew up going to the rinks in Kansas City. I'm from uh, Lee's at Summit, Missouri, which is a really conservative suburb of Kansas City. Um, and I went to the rinks as a kid and I loved it. It was so fun. And um, I didn't feel awkward. I'm like freaky tall, I'm over six feet tall. Um, and I felt like really good and comfortable going to the rink as a teen. And then um, I got kicked out for asking them to play Katy Perry, I Kissed a Girl, which reveals my age. Um, but yeah, they called me the gay F word. And I was like, no more skating. Like I can't go back. And it was like, I was off skates forever and I'm a teacher and one of the parents of one of my students, um, I knew roller skated and she's like a mom, she's great, her name's Wendy. And I always saw her skating around like the school where I work at um, and um, I was like, that's really cool. And one day I was just watching Netflix and they did a weird sports like documentary that came out over quarantine and I saw roller derby and I was like, oh man, I've always wanted to do that. So I texted Wendy immediately and we have the same shoe size and she like put me on skates in two days. Like she's like, buy these skates off of me. They're worth $300, but take them for a hundred. And it was just like, so she's so sweet and kind and showed me all the different pads and all the things. And she's in a, like a skate group, um, work in progress is my skate gang. Yay. And, um, it's just been amazing. And we go to parks like almost every day. So. Yeah, I love it. I've only been doing it for a short period of time, but it's been so fun and such a good like stress reliever. Thank you all again for being here. I think part of the reason I wanted to have this conversation is because I oftentimes feel so lonely as a non-binary roller skater in a part of the country where we don't necessarily have as much of a roller skating community, although there is a vibrant one that's been growing in Kansas City, but it can oftentimes reflect the large 
the, the same kind of skating that you see on social media if you haven't done a lot of work on your algorithm. So it can be very white, oftentimes very heterosexual. Most of the skaters I know are cisgender. The few trans and non-binary skaters I know are either the kids who skate in the league with me, which is amazing, or people who I like know but I'm not necessarily friends with. And because they're skaters on a derby team and not an official like me, there's sort of that weird divide that can happen between the two groups. So I guess I just wanted to hear about other people's experiences of being a non-binary skater and how your identity as non-binary intersects with the other identities that you have specifically in relation to skating, whether that is through the way you design your skates. I personally had purchased a pair of Moxie roller skates and I never felt comfortable in them because they felt too femme for me. And I felt like I got misgendered a lot more when I was wearing them because especially around here, people think Moxie and they think these like really amazing badass women, which is awesome. But then it led to like me being misgendered. So I have all these thoughts and these feelings, but I don't want to just like be in my own head about it. So I guess the first question is, how do your, does your identity as non-binary intersect with your other identities specifically in relation to roller skating? For me, I definitely get the thing with moxies. I wear them and I, for the most part, any park that I go to, I'm always called a girl, always referred to as she, and I, I'm not super confrontational, so it's really hard for me to find like a moment where I'm like, no, no, you're wrong. Like, and it's it's hard to say that like, no, you're wrong. This is actually what it is. It's essentially saying, oh, actually, my pronouns are this. It feels like I'm telling this person like you were wrong by assuming that, which I do want to get better at. But you know, it'll come with time. So I think that I guess my identity in skating and my identity like with myself and also as a skater. It's hard. It's really hard. It's hard to kind of like for, I guess like when I'm skating by myself or when I'm skating with my girlfriend or I'm skating with people that I know really well that already know my pronouns and know who I am. I always feel like a lot more comfortable and I feel a lot more like myself. And I have realized, especially like the last month or so with more skaters coming out and more people coming out, a lot of them are cis female skaters that um, are really like centered on the idea of like girl power and woman gang, like the, the, you know, squad gang, like squad goals and things like that and having that. And I kind of went through this period where I was like, I can't be a part of anyone's like, you know, girl squad. Like what, I'm not, a, I'm not, a, I'm not a girl. I can't be part of a girl squad. Like how am I going to find my group of people when this is everyone's group of people and everybody around me, especially in Temecula, it's very, very, very like, you know, cisgender, white, straight, not a lot of anything else. So I didn't feel like I would ever have any other connection with people that I didn't already know that already knew me. And it wasn't until I actually did a chat with uh, Kiana recently, a little bit ago, on the same subject, kind of, and ended up getting to skate with them and meet them and then I ended up meeting a few other people through that and that was actually what helped a lot which is why I wanted to do this because it helped me so much to do that last time I figured not only would this help me again it would also help somebody else seeing like you don't have to be a part of the girl squad and be a part of like you know the strong woman power of skating you can be your own skater and be who you, who you are and look however you want and even if people do think like oh, there's a strong woman rolling by. Like, it doesn't matter if people think that. I know that that's not what I am. That's not who I am. And I'm figure I'm deciding that for myself and I can do that. I'm allowed to do that. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I so relate to that. It's, um, I think a lot, especially with um, influx of new skaters and I'm absolutely one of them, a, a quarantine skater. Um, it's, there's so much like girl gang, girl power, girl squad. And it feels like a lot of skate groups are like, that is the thing they have in common, which is like chill, you know, whatever, if that makes you feel like great and empowered, cool. And I think most of them would be like, I often hear things like, oh, it's a girl skate, but it's all inclusive. And I'm like, well, it's not. Or if you say your meetup is inclusive and you hashtag like roller girl, roller babe, then it's not an all inclusive meetup. And like, you have to do that work, not me. Um, and like, I'm not going to grace you with my gorgeous presence. Like if that's what's underlying in that, you know, um, type of, uh, meetup, 
So I feel really fortunate. I really wanted to be a part of like a skate group that had other trans and non-binary people in it and had like cis men in it. So it didn't get like, there was no like girl gang, um, which is fine if that empowers you. But, uh, and I skate on, uh, I didn't get any kind of opportunity to buy Moxie skates as a quarantine skater. So I skate on uh, the Chaya Karma Park Pros, which I really like. They feel super like gender neutral. Um, one of the guys in our skate group has them. Um, my friend has them. And um, I feel really like how they are and how made for park skating. And they don't feel like super feminine. But I mean, what, what does that even mean? Um, so yeah, it's the identity in roller skating is hard because I initially wanted to join Derby and went in like, I'm training for a Derby. Um, and I was like, you know what? Like I get a lot of those vibes from a lot of the LA roller, you know, and just like even emailing different leagues around LA and being like, hey, like, do you have other trans skaters on your, um, <laughs> in your derby league? Like what is, oh, oh, welcome. It's like the ladies of this league. And so, yeah, I don't know if that is going to be for me. And I think that's, I don't know. I think if derby wants to be more inclusive, that's something they should really look into. But yeah, I, um, I'm happy where I'm at. And I do get misgendered a lot at the skate park, but like not with my friends. So I like to skate with my crew. So, yeah. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely feel that. Um, I wanted to add in, I feel like uh, because of the whole centering around girl, 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 I feel like I'm missing a part of, I'm missing out on a part of the community and interacting with the community. Um, like recently, there was a challenge that went out that was like very girl based, like I had girl in the name, like you have to hashtag your post girl. And it was a skate challenge. And I was like, well, I'm not a girl. And I'm sure if I asked, they'd be like, oh, you're fine. You can do it too. But I don't want to be an afterthought. <laughs> That's not, I don't want to be seen as, as woman with an asterisk. I am non-binary, a, a gender, you know? And, and I really, I don't, I don't, I don't feel comfortable in spaces that are women specified spaces that also say oh and femmes and like non-binary people too and it's like no uh, I'm gonna go do my meetup that's focusing on non-binary and trans people and y'all can you know show up if you want because that's the way it feels you know so when it comes to when it comes to um getting misgendered I notice it happens way more online in the roller skate community than it does in person. And that's even meeting people. And I don't even always give out my pronouns when I introduce myself. I'm trying to do that more. But it feels like people kind of get a, a, a sense that I'm not cis. So they avoid gendering me altogether, which I prefer over being misgendered. Um, so I generally like spend a lot of time at the skate parks or if I do go skating out in the streets is with friends who are reading my pronouns and, you know, don't misgender me. So I definitely feel like uh, even though I get misgendered a lot online in roller skating, having found local roller skating communities and like real life roller skating friends has made me feel a lot more comfortable in my identity because they're giving me that gender euphoria. They're constantly, you know, gendering me correctly and making me feel good about myself. So, yay gender euphoria. So, my experience in the skate community, um, I am really bad. I have really bad memories. So, I believe that I came out as non-binary about a year ago. It was basically at Roll Call, an event that happened in Richmond, Virginia. So, if I'm wrong, sorry. <laughs> um, it's been, it seems like it's been a year, even though it's been like six months. So, timing is just not good for me right now. But I believe that it's been a year and um, or a little more than a year, it was in August. And so like my whole skating uh, time hasn't necessarily been out as non-binary, but a lot of that has been figuring out who I am and how I identify. And like, you know, it goes from like, it's either gender and then sexuality, or it's like sexuality, then gender. So it's like just trying to figure it all out has been um, definitely interesting and difficult at points, but I'm happy to be where I am. And um, with skating though, it, I feel like happens both online and in person, but a lot of the online is more of like 
it's like almost trolling instead of being like, oh, Kiana, and then insert wrong gender here. It's like, oh, are they a man or a woman? Or are they like, they don't even look human. Like, it's not even like that they're accidentally, they're like purposely trolling almost. And it's like, I mean, to me, I'm like, I see those comments and I'm like, good. I don't like care for you to know which one, if you're going to like treat me with that energy, but it still is hurtful to see those comments. Um, and that's more when, you know, like if my stuff gets reposted, then they don't say like pronouns are they, them, then, you know, it gives those people the opportunity to do that type of trolling. But on my own page and with the energy that I have, I curate that space of like making sure that people, you know, are gendering me correctly. And if someone is not, then I will normally like message them about it or like I'll delete the comment and then tell them and be like, hey, just so you know, this comment made me uncomfortable because of et cetera. If you want to repost it, feel free. Just like use my uh, my correct pronouns. Um, but in person, it is really more of like a constant um, misgendering because no one is aware to ask, like unless it's my friends or like people who, you know, have the same identity or are queer, they're more prone to asking. But like, for example, I had a meeting the other day and they just like kept calling me girly and they were like, no problem, girl. And then like in the meeting, they were like, um, yeah, someone said that you did this. And like, I was like, I'm trying to like recreate the <laughs> what happened in my head, but they basically just used the wrong pronouns um, in the sentence. And it's just like hard to correct people when they're constantly doing it. Like you're almost like interrupting them, even though I feel like they're interrupting your whole energy and like life by using those wrong pronouns. So it's hard to like have that energy to correct someone when they're already not thinking about it. So it's really hard in person. Sometimes I have to like see what my energy is like and really say like, well, is this person super important that, you know, I need to spend this energy on them or is it something I can walk away from? Because that is protecting myself and my energy. Um, but in the beginning, it like I'm a lot aggressive now, I guess, at being able to be like, hey, like, please use my correct pronouns um, if those people in those spaces are important to me. Um, but when it first started, it was hard to correct people because, you know, like people just aren't thinking about it. Um, but I think that, you know, like with the platform that I have and the spaces that I've created, um, it doesn't happen as often. So I'm very thankful for that. Um, another thing someone was talking about, sorry, I feel like I'm talking a lot, um, was that, you know, like those spaces where they say like femmes only or like non-cis men or, you know, they have those titles. It's, it's difficult for me to, like, I want to go into those spaces, but at the same time, it is hard because I'm like, well, you're not strictly saying like trans, non-binary, queer, you're just saying femme, and I don't quite identify as femme, as well as like, I do like skating with everyone, like I want to skate with everyone, I don't want to be in a specified place that is not inclusive to everyone, um, as far as like, you know, I can understand where they don't want cis men in for sure, um, but like, I've grown up a lot of my skating, skating with men, and like, that is how I get my aggression out, is by like, mostly skating with men and I'm not saying that like those spaces are very harmful in a lot of ways but I would either prefer like strictly trans queer or non-binary or I would just want like a whole inclusive environment that makes sense because they aren't thinking of us and then they're just trying to get someone else out where I'm like I either just want non-binary um, trans or queer or I just want everything because coming into a feminine space already has the um, title of being femme and that is where to me it even feels less inclusive if that kind of makes sense personally a huge aversion to being in single gender spaces a lot of the time because i feel like that's when most of the misgendering is going to happen because people are expecting me to be a woman or to be femme and while i have done a lot of work on myself to get rid of the internalized misogyny and to be comfortable with the more masculine and the more feminine and then the just androgynous parts of me that exist you know, I have so many bad experiences from the frats and the sororities at my school and the ways that things worked in those spaces. And, you know, when we think about bathrooms and all of these other single gendered spaces that can be such places of anxiety and or violence and harm for trans and non-binary people that like sometimes it's hard. And I remember thinking like, I really want to draft on a roller derby team, but like, do I feel okay being a dreadnought Dorothy or a knockout or being on a team where the title of the team is so gendered? And, you know, I know some of the other trans folks in my league have felt very similarly. And I just come up with like my 
stepdaughter and I were talking the other day and I was like, well, what if we just had a team called like the sour cherries and the apple bruisers and everything was food puns and totally not related to gender, meaning that even though we skate with the, you know, women's flat track roller team suddenly becomes more open and more inclusive. Does that make sense to people? Yeah, I, yeah, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> There hasn't been a meetup where I have felt like super inclusive except of the friends that I am, like they know my pronouns and like we're all hanging out together. And I want to create those spaces where it is for queer folks and trans and non-binary skaters because I feel most comfortable in there because we all know to ask each other's pronouns and we all kind of have like the, sim not the same, but similar experiences where we can kind of take care of each other. Whereas like when, there are those fem spaces it's still not the same as like all inclusive where like my non-binary friends can also come and have that safe space whereas like just fem is sometimes not inclusive of like you know all of us i guess that was what i was trying to say um yeah thank you sorry does anybody else have anything they want to add on to sort of this part of the conversation Okay, sweet. Um, Kelly, you had mentioned something when you were talking that was part of what I also wanted to talk about with everyone. You specifically mentioned, you know, the skates you wear and why they feel good for you, you know, why you like them. And I know for me, the moxies didn't feel right, I think largely in part because of the way that they're marketed as going with a particular identity. And I was never able to do the work myself to like, feel like I could wear them and be seen as me. So I've done a lot of work on my derby skates with, you know, making them as queer and trans as absolutely possible. I've considered getting a pair of Kaya's. Um, they have those neat vintage skates that just looks like a pair of work boots. They also have work boot skates, which are just, they, they look so cool. And they give me that, the sense that if I wear them, I could have that feeling of like gender euphoria and looking more like me when I'm skating. So I'm wondering if you all could talk about if the way that you design and outfit your skates relates to your identities at all, or if it can help you get that moment of, you know, gender euphoria where you're like, yes, I am me. I am amazing. I am a badass and I am on skates, you know? I, so like I said, I do skate in moxies. Um, I do love them. Like, I'm not going to lie. I love them so much. And I am such like, I love colors. I love everything bright. I literally, like right now, I have purple moxies with neon yellow laces and neon yellow heart stoppers, and <laughs> like my knee pads are rainbow, and I have a silver glittery helmet, because I just like colorful things, and like it makes me happy, it makes me feel like myself, like my hair used to be really colorful, it's, it's this right now, <laughs> but I feel like my skates really do connect to me and who I am. I think my biggest problem with them is just that how other people see them is where there's like a disconnect and a problem. Cause like for me, I'm like, my skates are mine. They're a colorful, like expression of me. They don't have a gender. They're just my skates. Like I shouldn't have a gender just because my skates are purple and have a little heel and hearts on the toes. Like that doesn't make it anything, but other people see them. And it is, it's the, you know, the moxie skater girl look and it's kind of just one of those things that I wish other people, you know, took more time to say maybe it's how I view it that's wrong. Like how the fact that I'm seeing this as a woman's skate problem, not this non-binary person wearing them, looking female, getting upset that I'm calling them a female because they're wearing feminine skates. So I don't know. I think they feel like mine though, and I love them. <laughs> so that's enough for me. I like that like my skates, they feel like fans. They feel like they don't, they're, they don't feel like squishy or cute. I don't see them ever marketed for like, um, I only see like on Instagram, like cis dudes wearing them, which is like whatever, like they don't feel super, super heavily marketed at all. Um, but they just don't feel like they're really trying to push. And there's very few like reviews online about them. They're burgundy. Um, and I just, I love how they, there's no, I don't feel like they're trying to sell me something or a gender with this skate where I feel like other skating companies do. And it's not just Moxie, it's lots of different brands of skates. I feel like are selling 
this aesthetic, which is like white and cis and heterosexual and thin. And I'm also like, I am a fat person. Um, I am a plus size person. I'm like a size 18. So what clothes that I feel like comfortable in exercising also are gendered. Like I wear like yoga pants and a t-shirt or something. So people like also, I don't ever like pass at the skate park as non-binary. You know, what does that even mean? I don't know, but um, it is so interesting when um, skates feel like they're marketing to a like lifestyle that you could never achieve or don't want to achieve. And um, I think that's challenging, but I do get like sweet gender euphoria on my like giant bra skates. They feel very like, dinosaur coming and I roar, I, I really like that so they don't feel cute and they don't feel like but you could be cute and non-binary you can be whatever you can wear pink moxies it doesn't matter um but you won't it's hard when you I don't know for me I want to do everything I can so maybe people will gender me right at the skate park even if they won't like and they probably still never will but so I, uh, I started skating originally on the Chicago white skates with the, the, the plastic pink wheels. Um, and those broke on me very quickly. And then I started skating um, Moxie Beach Bunnies in the blue sky color. Uh, soon after getting them, I like quickly and then did like an Arizona tea design on them. And I'm telling you, that got me like brownie points at the skate park when it came to that like they no longer viewed it as like this super feminine skate they were like i want a pair like the guys at the skate park were like, were like i would wear those i want a pair of those you know um but it never like it had never like occurred to me that people were seeing these and seeing like girl skates you know because i i i worked very hard to kind of you know, try to break myself out of the gendering of clothing or items, or I know everybody else in society will, but like, I guess those things kind of come a little slower to me sometimes. Um, but currently I, I'm skating a pair of blackjacks, um, moxie blackjacks, and I feel definitely, definitely a little bit of gender euphoria through those states, and I'm not sure how to even describe it, but it's like the stiffness and like, it's, it's a slim, skate but like bulky in the right places I guess for me and it just feels very like powerful I don't want to say it feels masculine because what does masculine or femininity necessarily feel like but like it just feels like a little bit more me than say my past skates um so I do think that my my roller skates and my gear kind of you know help me present in a way that I feel most comfortable um, and I'm very grateful for that, definitely. I'm very happy for all the different ways we can customize our skates. I'm even considering like getting little like uh, letter beads and like putting my pronouns on the laces of my skates and being like, you, you know, you can't deny it now. <laughs> it's right here at the very thing you're watching, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, so yeah. Um, yeah, so I started skating on like a hundred dollar Rydell, black Rydell, like the like minimum like derby skates that they kind of sell where they're like here you don't have money which I did not have money these are the skates that you should get and that's what I started skating at derby wise and in the park it was basically my duo skate that got trashed right away because of that um and from there like I mean they were just standard black like ankle skates so I didn't really feel a thing about them because I was like well you're just gonna be trashed so it doesn't matter <laughs> Um, and then once I went up, I got the um, Moxie Lolly in Pull Blue, which is my favorite color. I did not like, because I'm a, uh, I like black things over like brown, grays, that kind of stuff. So I saw the heel and was like, oh no, we're definitely painting that. Like, <laughs> so I painted that and then the skate felt like mine. It felt great because I love the color turquoise. So it wasn't really a big deal to me. Um, I never really see certain colors as like, like feminine or masculine or this or that because like whatever I'm wearing if I'm feeling it I just feel myself but I can understand that like you know the outside world and society has grown with the idea of like pink is for women and blue is for men or whatever so with blue I guess I never really got like like too much of not backlash but like 
like when people would look at my skate, they would normally say I would skate that. And that was coming from like all sorts of different people. And that could be because of the color, which was blue. It was kind of like neutral-esque, I guess. Um, but like when I go to the skate park, I still get misgendered and it's probably more so for like what I'm wearing. Um, I feel masculine no matter what I'm wearing, even if I'm in a skirt or a dress or whatever. Um, so it's really hard because I feel like that's what people uh, look at me and gender me as. It's like, oh, you're wearing a dress, so you must be a woman. And it's like, well, no, I mean, other genders wear dresses. You just aren't in those spaces or you don't see it or you don't do it. So it's just frustrating in that aspect. But I feel like I'm a little more comfortable now just dressing however I can. I definitely cut my hair off and you know that was the way I tried to get people to understand that I'm like I don't identify as a woman or a girl um, but now I am a little more comfortable to the fact where I'm like I kind of want to rock my long hair now and like you know I and that takes time and that is just creating the spaces that I have and be able to feel comfortable in them but my skates are now black and teal and um, I feel like I'm trying to create a space where I feel like I'm trying to create like I don't want to say it the idol or like I'm trying to create an image because I didn't see it when you know I was non-binary or came out as non-binary I'm trying to create an image that you can skate moxies um, no matter who you are because obviously when I looked at like all the moxie girls who were skating in them um, I identified as that but it wasn't because of the fact that they were women it was because of the cool stuff that they were doing um, cause I feel super like aggressive and masculine when I skate, whether, you know, TikTok says that's a girly thing or not. <laughs> so, um, that, like, I never really saw that when I watched the video, I was more just like, I just want to do that eventually. So, but now like as everyone's talking and, you know, like someone's wearing a pink skate and they could be non-binary or trans and they don't want to be identified as a different way. Like that is important to have a marketing that, you know, shows all different kinds of people. So I just hope that like by me wearing those skates because I love them, obviously, you know, someone can look at that and be like, well, I can skate in those too or skate in a skate that is colorful because I just want to skate. So it's been like a good experience so far. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think one thing that we've all sort of been talking around is that there's, as non-binary skaters, we sort of see how there's these aesthetics out there that like we're trying to create a look or there are these aesthetics that are marketed. And some of that is happening on this like level of representation where we're like, I am not necessarily seeing myself represented. I'm not seeing the people who are my friends represented there. You know, the Moxie skate team has a particular look, just like all skate teams tend to have a particular look. The Impala skate team, Impala has a skate team, I think, right? Yes, maybe. But like you sort of, you know, that you have, there's a look that goes along with that. And so often we are not that. And I guess what we've all talked about doing is the customization and going beyond representation to find those ways that like we can feel like me when we're skating. Do I sound like I'm totally off base? No. <laughs> okay, good. Um, and maybe that's what I've been struggling the most to do is just like really put the like be like, okay, society, by, by marketing, like this is me, this is who I am on my skates. And I thank you all for, I guess, helping me realize that. Those were the two questions I have. And I know we still have a little bit of time left and I really didn't want to be the person who was driving the entire conversation. So if there is one of you, all of you, many of you, yes, Kiana's like me, who has something where like, I need to talk about this, please. The question is, what do you all maybe want to see in the roller skate community that's more inclusive towards you? Whether that be like certain events that are hosted, just like, you know, uh, like queer, non-binary or trans or specifically just, you know, one identity kind of rollout or if like meetups or anything like that, I guess. I mean, I have something to say on that for sure, but I, since I'm asking the question, I'd love to hear from y'all first. <laughs> um, I think something, something, uh, an idea I had in my mind for a while that might help at even non-specific skate meetups is um, skate hosts supplying like name tag stickers where you can put your name and your pronouns on and you know, everybody can do it. So it's not just singling out the trans and non-binary people, you know? Um, I think things like that would be very helpful. 
I love affinity spaces. I'm super into them. Um, I, uh, yeah, I would love to see like a trans specific meetup or rollout or something like that. Um, I kind of like initially posed a question and like, I don't know if it was an LA group or in a larger like Facebook group. And it was like, Hey, is there like a group specific of like trans and non-binary skaters? And it was just this like, Oh, join the LA roller bunny group. They're all inclusive. <laughs> it's just like, you know, it's just like, no, I want an infinity space. Like there's so much power and like just being amongst, you know, each other. And like, yeah, I think that spaces like that and rollouts like that, meetups like that would help also counter like the, you know, the like femme skate, um, which is fine and great. And like you do you and like, you know, but we're going to do our own thing too. And that's cool. And um, yeah, I do find like the CIB everything. Like I have a lot of like, uh, we, I was like, I will never buy the slide blockers because I'm not a chick in a bowl. And <laughs> it's, it's hard. And like, oh, I know a lot of people have met, like I know in my skate group have met great friends through like their meetups. And um, it's kind of like, oh man, that's something I'll not have. I will not have access to. Uh, and you can say, you know, I'll, you know, I'll welcome and, you know, what is, what's the history, what's the name, what's the practice, um, what's the assumption when you show up, so, yeah. I sadly have not been to that many meetups. There are meetups that happen in Kansas City, but especially because I do have a family, this is my amazing husband slash wife slash gender terms or whatever, uh, partner. <laughs> um, and especially like, you know, working a job at an evil capitalist corporation and also having a family. <laughs> we are, you know, I'm not always able to get to the spaces because people sort of assume like, in addition to there's a particular type of person, they also assume that there's like a lifestyle that goes with skating where you're like, single or you have a partner who's part of it and my partner does roller skate a little bit and does skateboard and you know it's nice having a kid with whom I can go skating but I can't always bring rainbow bite to a meetup with me especially because most meetups are adult only spaces or the assumption is that they're adult only spaces so that can also be super alienating but then at the same time as much as I love skating with Ari I don't always want to go to a just kids meetup uh, because it's also important for youth to have spaces to share without an adult being there, being like, hey, I'm cool too. And I know that she also, like, roller skating is not my thing. It's not her thing. It's our thing, but it's also her thing and also my thing. And, like, trying to find places that also allow for us to experience skating together, but also separately can be really, really difficult. Um, so sometimes that's frustrating for me too, is there's not just, like, an assumption of, like a body type or a gender, but there's also assumptions about age. There's assumptions about class as well. You know, sometimes it's like way far away and I'm like, who can afford to drive 40 minutes across the city? Not me, not today, or who has the time? They assume that, you know, everybody can just come after work. And, and sometimes that gets really frustrating for me as well. And it, that's not, that's just like, I guess a complaint and an observation as opposed to like a specific thing I wanna see change. Jaden, I don't know if you have anything that you want to add to this conversation or this, this particular question. I feel like I agree with everybody. I definitely like the name, the sticker thing idea, that idea. I think Savvy said it. Great idea. I love that. Um, I mean, I agree. Most of the meetups that happen around me aren't around me. They're somewhere else because Temecula, again, doesn't have a lot going on. And most of the events that do happen are usually like all girl rollout or like beach day and then you go and then it is usually mostly all girls and a few people that maybe are non-binary yep somebody said bikini skate the bikini skates all of those things like that and I'm like yeah I'd love to go but also like I don't know because I don't know what kind of people are going to be there who's going to be there and it's also an hour away so if I go do drive if I drive an hour and then it ends up being something I'm not comfortable at. I'm an hour away with no one I know. <laughs> like, and usually, and I guess this is maybe just for myself, like maybe not everyone else experiences this, but I don't really have the luxury of knowing all of the people I follow on Instagram. And so if I do drive somewhere that's far away to go try to meet people, it's really intimidating 
not only meeting people and having to now say, okay, if I meet these new people, I have to introduce myself with my pronouns. I have to make sure I give them like the pronouns right at the beginning. Otherwise, no one's going to know them. And now here's a whole new group of people that have a completely wrong idea about who I am or they're going to find out later when they look at my Instagram and they see my pronouns in my bio. And then you get like the messages like, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to misgender you. And it's like, yes, I know. Okay. Like I was too late to introduce myself how I should have and it didn't work out. And I don't know. It's just kind of scary. It's kind of scary like to put yourself out there in a situation that's so far away and not really know how it's going to go and not have an idea of like who's going to be there, what it's going to be like. So yeah, (laughs) more just complaints than solutions. I'm sorry. (laughs) So on that topic, uh, things that I guess, because this is going to be live eventually on Rebels (laughs) YouTube, um, I feel like, and please give me like, you know, uh, your yes or no's on this, but I feel like what I've tried to do with events and such is say that like, this is a safe space for, and then insert like LGBTQ or like um, black or people of color or both or obviously both. (laughs) Um, But whoever is coming, like, I want those people to know that those spaces are safe for them. So I feel like that's in one way that I try to ahead of time tell people, like, you know, you're welcomed here because, you know, I identify as this and I want you to know that, like, I'm trying to make this safe space. Um, But that's different for everyone else. So I can also understand why people don't show up because you should feel safe. And if you don't know anyone, then obviously that's totally tough. So Um, And that's how I feel sometimes when I go to like Long Beach or LA for stuff. Um, One thing I really appreciated was when Rebel did um, the queer rollout because that like made me feel safe and like it is how I identified and I was like I know I'm gonna feel safe in this uh, particular rollout because it's literally in the name (laughs) like you know. Um, So I try to do that and then I think that name tags are such a good idea and I I did that for my birthday last year and I don't know why that's just not like a common thing like right now like wearing a mask is just like being polite like why don't you just wear name tags so you can be polite and you can be more inclusive not just in like the bio of your Instagram but like in person right so I think that that is awesome and if there's ever anything else like I would also love to know whether it's like here or you know on Instagram (laughs) so if you think of anything else I'm always open Oh no, I think that's so good. And it's just like, it's also part, it's the work of cis people to learn how to not gender people as soon as they meet them. And like, it's really easy and it's a really quick uh, habit to break if you just like start saying like, oh, I don't know their pronouns, so I will use they, them pronouns unless we know their pronouns or otherwise. And like, that's something that I do generally. And I think that um, cis people can put in some work on there, especially if they are going to claim that they're um, inclusive and put she, her, hers in their bio, which is cool. And like, what's the point of that if you can't use a they, them pronoun? There's not a point. It's just performative. So. And related to that, I know one thing Jaden said is that they will sometimes get messages where it's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. That's another great place for cis people to start doing a little bit of their own work. And be, like, you're not supposed to, as a cis person, put all of this, I'm so sorry, on the trans person or on the non-binary person. Because then suddenly we're put in a position of having to be like, oh no, it's okay, but like, please do better. You're supposed to just say, sorry, I will do better. And then move on and just do better instead of like requiring additional emotional labor from the trans or non-binary person. So that's another thing that would probably be great to see as well in some of these spaces, even if it's just happening on the interpersonal level. Although, and Venmo, yes, also Venmo. Venmo is good. Um, But, you know, maybe, I don't know, talking about some of these things or, I've never been to a meetup where there's been like an intentional setting of like community standards or anything, but that's something that I used to do a lot when I was teaching grad school is like at the beginning of the year, because I'm a feminist educator, we would sit down and we'd be like, okay, these are the things that we agree upon as what we want our classroom community to do. It's, we will respect gender pronouns. We will, you know, practice like move up, move back types of speaking, like all of those kinds of things. And maybe having that be something that happens at the beginning of meetups could also be super helpful um like you know these these community standards and that way i think um what kiana was talking about can happen more intentionally where it's like 
we are a safer space, not just because we say we're a sp safer space, but because these are the things that we agree to do as a community when we're roller skating together. I feel like that would be a great, um, like, post to make of, like, here are the community standards for, you know, like, because that looks different for everyone. You would think that, obviously, you know, they would be the same, but I guess some different events could have more. Um, so I feel like that'd be like a fun little slideshow um, if anyone's interested in creating together and then we can share that with the community. And for example, like I'm hosting a event on the 23rd for Halloween and that could be something I would post in the Facebook group being like, if you're coming to this event, you are upholding these community standards, otherwise don't come. And then that way, you know, like, that could be something that's shared across the board and that could be like really accessible for people. Um, and I know that like, I'm sure individually we could all make one, but coming together as a community is also really good. So that'd be cool to make. <laughs> for sure. What are some things that, you know, if we have the moment and the moment is now to tell cis skaters something we need them to know, what is it? Something we would like them to do in the community, something we would like them to stop doing in the community? Um, this actually, I guess for me, this also like came up when I started coming out. I think it's the idea that it's not my responsibility to teach people who are not non-binary about being non-binary. Like that's, that work isn't my, it's not my job. Like just because I identify as that, obviously I'm sure I know more about it than most people that don't identify as that. Like I don't want to have to answer 10,000 questions that you probably could have just Googled and you would have gotten the same answer or a similar answer or maybe a very different answer, but it still would have worked just as well. And I get that like me putting myself out there and me doing like a video chat like this or me posting on Instagram about it and like sharing information. That's one thing because I chose to do that and I chose to share that information on my own time by myself. But if I tell somebody like, hey, my pronouns are they, them, and they're like, oh, well, what is that? And what does that mean? What about this? And 5,000 questions come after, and I don't even really know this person. It just doesn't feel fair that they're getting all this information from me, and I've now taken all this time to teach them when it's, it's not my responsibility as that person. It's theirs to go learn about it and to become a better friend, a better ally, whatever it is that they need to be, want to be to do that on their time, not my time. Because I've already taken the time to figure that out for myself. I took a lot of time myself to learn about it and to educate myself on even the parts of it that may not apply to me. I still made sure to learn about it because it's important and there's others in the community that do identify with certain things that I don't, that I st should still you know, know about. And I just don't wanna have to feel like it's always gonna be on me to make sure other people know the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. Um, I feel like I I need a better boundary for sure of being like, you know, is this energy okay to expend? Because I feel like on the internet, at least for me, it's really easy to give energy to a lot of people because you're not in person. So sometimes I do spend all that energy and then I, they'll come back later and still be like, hey, I have a question. And like, they totally could have Googled it or, you know, like, I feel like I should be dropping my Venmo every day and being like, hey, I'm apparently your teacher, you know, send me some money. <laughs> um, but I guess the thing that I want people to um, stop doing is, first off, you don't know my gender or how I identify. So stop saying that I skate really well for a girl because I just skate however, because I, you know, skate. I put the time into it. It's not because I'm a girl um, or vice versa. Like if you're saying that for any other gender, like, you can just compliment them and say, like, I like your skating. Stop saying it's for something or whatever. Um, that really bothers the heck out of me. A lot of people do that on the internet, on TikTok specifically. Um, and it's very frustrating. Um, and I also would like people to um, double think about what they say on the internet, too, and make sure that what you're about to type is something that in all aspects comes across um, nicely and comes across as you've thought about it before you typed it because <laughs> people will just type whatever comes out of their mouth and sometimes it's hurtful even if you don't mean to, so. <laughs> um, I guess for me, the one thing that I would want is for cis skaters to leave more space. 
I work a lot with kids. So I think I think about some stuff different than a lot of skaters who only move within adult worlds. And it's been so amazing to have a couple of my skaters more recently and in the past, you know, disclose to me that they are non-binary or trans and have these conversations with them about, okay, well, how do you want me to back you up at practice? Do you want to share your pronouns with everybody in the group at the beginning? Or do you want me to just sort of use your pronouns and the people who get it will get it? you know, what name do you want me to use for you? And I feel like a lot of cis coaches, and this is in adult and kid leagues, don't leave that space. They don't leave space for people to explore identities and to change and to become a different skater than who they were when they started or when they met people. And having that space be left for kids and for adults to change, to grow, to want to try different things out and figure out what fits and what doesn't fit is so important. And especially with how gendered the skating world can be, that space is just not there unless there is somebody intentionally creating it. Um, yeah, I would say um, two things to cis skaters who want to do better, uh, to not um, think, why are you gendering a space? Like, is there like a purpose behind that? Like is this all girls meet up gendered because you don't like cis men and like where what are you going to do some work on that like like do you do you, or do you actually mean like people who experience like gender related oppression like is that the term you actually want versus like you know a girls meet up like i would love for cis folks to do more work on why they love to gender spaces um really intensely I love it when people ask, like I've had a cis skate friend, uh, the person who got me into skating, Wendy, who's been like, do you want me to introduce your name and your pronouns? And I'm like, only if everyone does it um, in new spaces, <laughs> because I'm not trying to like, I don't know, I'm not trying to like push anything. Yeah, oh, uh, what I was gonna say is, um, yeah, I would, I feel like there's a lot of performative allyship in multiple segments in skating land and in the world. Um, and I wish people would say what they mean more. And like, if you put your pronouns in your Instagram bio, like be able to use a they, them pronoun, be able to use neo pronouns, like really do your work on that. Um, like <laughs> read the quick and easy guide to they, them pronouns by, you know, Archie, which is a great resource other than, you know, Google it. Um, and to also like when they say things like Black Lives Matter, like how are you showing up for that? Like you just put it in your bio because it's trendy and like you, you, yeah, it's, it's tough. And like where, what is your work to do on that? And can you stand behind any statement that you make on social media or in your life? Um, just mean what you say and do the freaking work because it's really rewarding. Like if you will do the work, you will grow. Um, like I learned so much from the movement for black lives in LA and going to the general meetings and like there's a lot of affinity group work there So it's like okay all the white people are now gonna go here and do this thing and do their work and you know um, Non-black POC people are gonna do their work and just like everyone gets their own work to do um, And I think that that is something that a lot of people could learn from so Thank you so much for bringing that up because honestly, I didn't know how to put it into words, but like that is exactly like what I wanted to hear because I think when it comes to trans and non-binary people in the roller skating community, all the cis folks seem to think it's on us to show ourselves and explain every bit of ourselves and, and be an absolute open book for all of their consumption. When really the case is they need to do the work and not only do they need to do the work to help keep us safe and help, you know, help us thrive, but they also need to do the, their own work internally. I know that I have seen many cis skaters who are like, yeah, I have plenty of non-binary friends, but all your non-binary friends are a certain way. And that's obvious that you only approve of one kind of non-binary person. Or, you know, a lot of roller skate art. I've literally never seen anybody that was not femme or a woman in roller skate art. Not once. Not, not a single time in the three years I've been roller skating and on the roller skating internet community. Not once. And that is something that bugs me. <laughs> Definitely. Because, you know, I get it. Like, we want to draw what we see. But maybe let's open that up a bit more. 
because you can't say you're an open-minded person and not realize that you have these closed doors, you know? Um, I definitely think that's something important that uh, a lot of more people need to be paying attention to because a lot of people will say, yeah, I'm an, I'm an ally to non-binary people, but will still see all their non-binary friends as women light or, you know, or, or male light or whatever, but they'll still be putting a binary gender to somebody who has made it clear that they do not identify with a binary in their gender at all. You know, I think that's something, I think literally it's perception. You literally have to change your perception and how you view people, how you gender people in general, you know, um, if you need to like, you know, just practice, uh, with somebody who's comfortable with it or somebody you trust or another cis person, but it, it takes the actual work and it is, it's, it's work, <laughs> you know? And related to that, it's like when somebody says, like the other day I was giving blood and somebody was like, oh, I have a gay son. I'm totally down with all of this. I was like, no, that's not how that works. You can't just pull the, I have a gay friend or I have a non-binary friend or I have a black non-binary femme friend. You can't pull that card and tokenize the person's identities and use that as a way to pretend like you've done the work when you haven't done the work and probably aren't really planning on doing the work and one of the things I've talked a lot about with my partner's daughter recently is like doing that work is also a way of showing that we care when your black friend tells you don't use this word for me you have and go google it you listen to what that smart 12 year old said and you go google it and you do the work because if you want to show your friend that you care about her you're gonna do that work and I, I want to see cis folks doing that work and I want to see white folks doing that work you know, I want to see the folks with the privilege doing that work because that's also going to make a big difference. I know we are probably pretty close to time. I don't know if anybody has anything they want to say in closing or final thoughts. Just thank you um, for doing this and thank you uh, to Rebel for opening up this space. It's been so life-giving and wonderful and I would love to skate with all y'all. And um, I'm going to be in Kansas City skating in December, so. <laughs> Wait, that was you posting in the group? Yeah. What? Yes. yes. Um, yeah. And I just love skating with other trans and non-binary folks and just such a joy to have this space and time. So thank you. Okay. So thank you all so much. This was so amazing. So life-giving and so many pure, wonderful, amazing things for people to watch and take away from this, which I think is just so, so, so important. Like so important. So um, in conclusion, I want everyone to, if you have something that you want to promote, like, do you have a shop? Do you have an Etsy? Do you have a TikTok? Do you have a Venmo? Like any of those things, I would love to go through each of you and just allow you the time to do that. If you'd like to support me in, you know, everything that I do, I am trying to make, uh, you know, like, as I said, people who wear Moxies, I want them to know that, you know, they can be who they are in them. So if you shop at Moxie, you can use my code Kiana Yuana. Um, I also have a, I also promote and am sponsored by an awesome CBD company. So if you like them too, you can use code Kiana20 at uh, Gold Standard CBD. Um, or you can just Venmo me, also Kiana Yuana, and I will like that too. <laughs> Um, I have my Instagram, which is where I post all of like my art and everything. It's underscore J underscore Flores. I pretty much every now and then I'll release something or post something that I'm going to be selling like some type of art or things like that. Or if anyone ever wants a painting, I'm more than happy to always try to do a painting or something like that. And I'm hoping to start releasing more stuff soon once I get the confidence to start doing that. Um, so I definitely love it if people could follow me there and just kind of see what I'm going to be sharing. Okay, I can go ahead. Um, if people want, they are welcome to follow me on Instagram. I'm a pretty private person who doesn't spend a lot of time on social media. And usually my Instagram is just either films I've watched, cute pictures of my four cats, or books I've recently read. Um, but they are welcome to follow me at, at Transdroid. I'll just have to approve the request. I can go. Yeah, my Instagram is Kelly Aaron O'Fallon. And I post uh, skating videos and um, cute pictures of my pit bull puppy and um, 
my spouse who is awesome and also trans and um yeah it's our fun little la life so <laughs> so um i have an instagram at savvycraft and that's craft with a k um i also have a patreon where i upload early content of what i'm working on i make jewelry i crochet i roller skate i do flow props um, basically just try to collect as many hobbies as possible. Collecting hobbies is my hobby. Um, I also have a Venmo, same as all of my usernames, SavvyCraft, and that's SavvyCraft with a K. Um, yeah, if you want to check out any of that content, I, that's what I spend most of my time doing is just making content to put online. So, Awesome. Thank you all so much for taking the time out of your very busy lives to have this discussion. I think that all the people that watch this video are going to learn a lot. And um, I think that everyone is just so grateful for your time today. I really appreciate it. So everyone, thank you so much for watching this episode of Queer Girl Straight Skates. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and support all of these wonderful humans. All of the things that they talked about are in the description bar down below. So you can find each of them, support them, reach out to them, talk to them about how much what they said meant to you and have a wonderful week. And most importantly, cheers to the queers. Bye, everybody.